All right, now that we've gotten all the data memories out of the way, it's time to figure out how to actually level up in Warmind, since things have apparently slowed down significantly, and they have for some people. Leveling in Warmind is not complicated if you don't want it to be. If you're not the kind of person trying to max out immediately and get every last drip of light and power, then it's pretty simple, but let's all get on the same page here. Let's assume that you are 330 power without mods, 335 with them. For the purposes of this video, I will assume that you have no plus five power mods in any of your gear, although I'm sure I will mention examples with it in your gear. Ideally, when you are leveling, you should keep things consistent to keep things as simple as possible. So, either have plus five mods in everything, or have plus five mods in nothing, which also means that you shouldn't utilize exotics when trying to calculate where your new soft cap is if you're doing mods in nothing. If you do half and half, it's gonna be kinda hard to tell what your ever-changing soft cap is without some sort of a calculator. So, you're 330, you just popped open Warmind, where do you start? Well, you can start anywhere, honestly, as the soft cap is 340. So you can grind until you get to about 335 with basically no problems at all. Once you get to 340 via combinations of legendary engrams, blue drops, and vendor package turn-ins, that's where things slow down. The campaign itself is limited to 340. As soon as you hit 340, or 345 with mods, you basically need to do your first powerful gear milestone. That's the only way you're gonna start moving up. So do one of those. Now, depending on how much you care about leveling up, this is where things can stay simple or get slightly more complicated. If you don't care that much, if you're not looking to push the raid the first weekend or anything like that, then I would suggest doing a couple, you know, two to three powerful gear milestones, then grinding out some blues and vendor packages until you get stuck again, then do more milestones, and then grind out more blues, etc., just flopping back and forth. If you do care a lot, then instead of doing two or three milestones, you do one milestone, turn that in, grind blues, gunsmith packages, vendor packages as high as possible, then you do another milestone, etc., etc., etc. Doing it one by one is a lot more time consuming, but it can potentially lead to one or two extra or free levels because you're being so meticulous with your leveling. I would say the average player probably does not need to go one by one. The average player can probably do two or three milestones and then go grind a little bit, two or three milestones, blah, 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 blah. At around 346 or 351 with mods, blues and vendor packages and all that kind of stuff will start dropping at 341. And from this moment, blues and vendor packages will be dropping five levels below you, or 10 if you have full plus five mods. If you do need specific pieces to get a level boost, you can buy stuff from the raid vendor. Just keep in mind that one, you do need to have run the raid that week, so this is more for alternate characters, and two, those items are locked to 340 power. That's what they're sold at. After you start to run out of milestones and all that kind of stuff, this is where the raids come in big time. Every single encounter will drop a high level item. The one thing that you should not do on your first character if you're looking to push levels is do the prestige raid before normal. Otherwise, you'll just end up getting multiple drops of the same light level. Normal and Prestige both drop the same level items. So if you do Normal first and then get a few levels, then the Prestige can drop even higher because of how the game determines the power level of your drops. Prestige will also only drop armor, so keep that in mind if you're maybe hoping for some weapon drops to boost your weapons, or if you're strictly looking for armor drops on alternate characters where you already have strong weapons. You can also throw in Escalation Protocol into the mix if you have the ability to beat some of the higher levels since that drops powerful items as well. Ideally, you will have basically done everything on one character, milestones first, then raids, 
gotten as high as possible, then what you'll do is transfer your weapons over to your next character so that the next character has a higher soft cap. You're starting out at a higher power level. But you need to keep in mind that as you level up the power of your weapons, the base level requirement is also going to increase. So you won't actually be able to use your higher level weapons until you're at a higher base level on your character. Now, if you want, you can just go grind some public events and get to level 28, level 29 before starting the actual campaign of Warmind on your second and third characters. For your second and third character, you're going to transfer over your highest level weapons and ideally do the prestige raid first or among the first things that you do. You want to do this because you're probably going to have high level weapons and the prestige raid only drops armor. So it's better to try to get a high level armor set on an alternate character with your already high level weapons as opposed to potentially doing some milestones that end up giving you weapons which you already have, which would make them a waste. Basically, first character should be milestones, then raids, and then follow-up characters should be prestige raid or raids, and then milestones in order to reduce risk. I imagine Trials of the Nine also comes into the mix somewhere in here, potentially, but since we haven't had one since the launch of the expansion, I'm not 100% sure, but if it gives powerful items, which it does, then just filter that in as needed with all of the other milestones. Heroic Adventures may potentially contribute as well in this leveling chain. After 370, things slow down even more with, I assume, item upgrades not being as potent as they were from 340 to 370, but there's only a handful of people who are 370 at the time of this video, so I'm not 100% on how much it actually slows down. That's about it. Starting out, it is purely on you to get your milestones done and getting raid runs in. Running raids is going to be the thing that boosts you significantly because of how many drops there are. Heroic Strikes, outside of the milestone to do three of them, do not drop anything higher than usual. They still just drop you blues below your power level. Whether or not that's good or bad, we'll talk about that in another video. But yeah, that's leveling in Warmind. It's not too complicated to understand, although I know we have some things to discuss about how it actually turned out and how people feel about leveling in Warmind. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.